Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. <laughs> Got a crazy story for you out of Kentucky. Uh, and I found this one on my own, by the way. No one sent this to me. What? Wait, come on, people, pick it up. <laughs> but uh, two GM employees were jailed for racing the brand new C8 Corvettes on the streets of Kentucky. And uh, of course, Kentucky is where these cars are being built, so that makes sense. But these were two engineers for General Motors who decided to go out and apparently do a little uh, in-the-field testing. So we're talking about the new 2020 Chevrolet C8 Corvette Stingray, which is the mid-engined Corvette that people have been talking about. And it's a fascinating car. I'll admit, I'm not a Corvette guy. I've never been a Corvette guy. But when I saw the new Corvette, I'm like, you know, I could become a Corvette guy if that's a Corvette. So I'm interested in these cars, although not interested enough to buy one. But <laughs> I do find them fascinating. But um, Bowling Green, Kentucky, of course, is uh, ground zero for Corvettes. And according to Kentucky State Police, a trooper stopped two men on the evening of Wednesday, January 8th. <laughs> Strangely enough, on Lover's Lane, it's the name of a street in Bowling Green, for exceeding the posted 45 mile per hour speed limit by more than 26 miles per hour. And they were charged with reckless driving and racing motor vehicles on a public road. And I can tell you that in many places, reckless driving or drag racing are very serious traffic offenses to the point that they're not even considered civil infractions or often considered misdemeanors. They are crimes that will go on your permanent record, which we've talked about before. So I've represented people who've been charged with reckless driving in Michigan. It's a very serious offense in Michigan. I suspect it's a serious offense in Kentucky. So in Michigan, for instance, you can go to jail for it, you can get six points for it, and you can lose your license for it. That's reckless driving or drag racing. They both have those kind of severe penalties. So very, very serious. So I suspect it's also serious in Kentucky. So Automobile Magazine is where I found the story. Mac Morrison wrote it, uh, and they've been working trying to verify just how fast they were going, but they can't get more details other than the 26 overcharge. Um Police did arrest the drivers, apparently, and haul away the cars. Now, here's the problem. The cars weren't owned by the men driving them. The men worked for General Motors as engineers, and the cars were company cars. Um, as of right now, I don't believe any of these cars have made it out to the public yet because they haven't started manufacturing the civilian versions yet because of the strike. The strike pushed everything back. I believe manufacturing will begin in February, if my memory serves correct, as they say. Um, according to the employees' LinkedIn profiles, one of them is a computer-aided engineering engineer working on induction and exhaust systems, and the other one is an electrical engineer, uh, and no one was injured in the incident. So it just seems like there was uh, a couple vehicles out there going a little too fast, and the police got involved and said, well, these two cars appear to be doing some kind of relationship that we suggest means they were racing each other. And therefore, the drivers got arrested and the cars got impounded. General Motors was asked about this by Automobile Magazine. And General Motors responded, as a corporation does, in very, very lame speak. <laughs> we are aware of an incident involving our test vehicles and are currently investigating. Safety remains our overriding priority at General Motors. We have no further comment at this time. As for the Corvettes, like I said, beautiful cars. Police uh, had them towed from the scene and put them in a tow yard where a police representative said the vehicles later on were, in fact, retrieved the next day by the owner. And by the owner, Audible Mill Magazine speculates that means General Motors because he said we're company cars. So per GM's statement, it is unknown whether or not there was any disciplinary action taken with respect to the engineers driving the cars. But they say that this is a particularly embarrassing event for the Corvette brand, uh, as it is tied closely to the Bowling Green community. The city is home to Chevrolet's Corvette manufacturing plant, as well as the National Corvette Museum. I've never been to either of those, but I've driven through Bowling Green once very late at night with Wolfie in my vehicle with me. Another story altogether, as we say. Uh, Wolfie was asleep at the time, so he wouldn't have many memories of that. But I remember driving by going, oh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, home of the Corvette. But um, this is a problem. But I can tell you, that brings to mind several stories I can tell you. 
uh, as I wrote books about the winged cars, I always looked the wrong direction. About the winged cars, the Dodge Daytona and the Plymouth Superbird, I interviewed guys who designed those cars, built those cars, manufactured those cars, wind tunnel tested those cars, uh, tested them on tracks, tested them at the proving grounds, did all kinds of work on those cars. And I would always ask them, I'm just curious, did you ever get in one and just floor it? And I had several guys tell me, oh, at the proving grounds, all day long, you know, and talk about what it's like to be out on a closed course by yourself in a car that's capable of doing almost 200 miles an hour or 200, depending on how it's equipped. And I had one guy tell me, you know, I, yeah, sure, got in it for unbelievable. I go, how fast are you going? About, he's about 150. I go, where was this? He goes, I-75. <laughs> I-75 is not a closed course. It is not a proving ground. It is not a track. I-75 is an interstate highway. I said, where was this? He goes, someplace north of Detroit. <laughs> 150. Um, and I, I've, I've encountered other guys who told me stories like that. And, and you know, it's one of those things that we don't condone. We don't condone. But, you know, uh, as, the, as the saying goes, and I've said it before, when you're holding a hammer, the entire world looks like a nail. And when you're in a car that looks like it can do 200 miles an hour and you're behind the wheel, you're tempted. You're tempted. And I've mentioned before, I've actually driven the car that this model's based on. And it's currently in a museum, but the car runs and drives. And I got to drive it. And I, I drove it for a, uh, an article that I wrote for uh, Mopar Action Magazine. In fact, if I can dig the cover up uh, today, I'll post a photograph of the cover. <laughs> The photograph on the cover is taken, let's let's say, at speed. It's what we call that. Uh, the car is actually moving in that photograph. That is not a, a, a an effect. And it's actually moving very, very fast. Um, and I can also tell you, um, uh, I believe it was Patrick George from Jalopnik who was driving a car of some sort through a state back east. Maybe Virginia? I think it was Virginia. And he got pulled over for speeding. And the problem is he was speeding too much. And because of his speed, he wound up spending some time in jail. I think it was Patrick. I could be wrong on that. But it was, it was one of the editors from Jalopnik who spent some time in jail <laughs> and, and actually wrote some articles about not just the car part of it, but the jail part of it. Because it's, hey, it's all part of the story, you know. If we've learned nothing else from Hunter S. Thompson. It's that everything that happens is the story. Not just what you were sent to cover, but what you were doing. So I can also finally add, just as... You know, I like to add in the personal effects here. Um, again, misusing that word, but for purpose. Um, years ago, uh, I wrote uh, articles for a magazine that my brother and I published. And I, I don't talk about that a whole lot, simply because the magazine's defunct. And it was a long time ago. But we did a lot of fun stuff. And, and it, was, it was just a, a, a great early writing experience for me. But also, we had a lot of fun experiences. And we would go out in Michigan. The magazine called, was called Michigan Explorer. We'd go out in Michigan and just do stuff and then write about it. And I went skydiving. I got to fly in a B-17 bomber, got to drive a Hummer, and um, went um, flew in a helicopter. Um, all kinds of interesting experiences and just did them in Michigan and wrote articles about them. And someone pointed out to my brother that the Dodge Viper was being assembled and built in Michigan. And therefore, that made it a Michigan product. And wouldn't it be fun to go drive a Dodge Viper for a little while? <laughs> and my brother, and this is one of those things, you know, nowadays everyone knows about press cars and so on. And, 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 and there, there are influencers on the, on the internet, social media influencers, who can talk their way into and get rides in cool cars. And my brother developed this skill a long, long time ago. And he, he talked us into getting a Dodge Viper GT Coupe um, uh, the first year that they came out with, with the actual hard top as opposed to the Roadster version. And um, we got to drive that car for about a week. And same thing there. Had some, had some experiences in that car um, traveling at a high rate of speed. Which, by the way, somebody commented to Steve, there's no such thing as a high rate of speed. It's redundant because speed... And, and rate are two different things, and I'm not going to get into the physics of it. All I know is we were going fast. <laughs> I can probably dig up a photograph of that, too, and stick that on screen here. And by the way, I, you know, people who regularly follow my channel, and, and especially the ones who hang out with me on Sundays during the live talks, 
People occasionally ask me if I have a muscle car I'd like to get somewhere down the road because I don't have one right now. And I mentioned before, yeah, I might get myself a Viper one of these days. I might, I might. And one of the reasons that I might get one is that I had one. I had occasion to drive one and I enjoyed it at the time. I enjoyed it very, very much. So um, I, 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 you know, I could look into getting a Dodge Daytona or a Plymouth Superbird, but the problem is they're not only are they expensive, but I'd feel bad driving it because they're, they're such cool cars and they're so rare, you know, but a Viper is not the kind of car that, you know, if I drove it and put miles on it, I'd feel bad about it. But <laughs> I can tell you right now, when I drove one back in the day, I didn't feel bad about that either, <laughs> which is one of the reasons that I think about it and go, you know, I, I, could, I, I could see myself in one of those cars these days. So getting back to the original story two GM engineers busted for driving a brand new Corvette too fast on the streets of Kentucky. Of course, they are innocent until proven guilty, and we'll see what happens. I'll update you. Questions, comments, put them below. Let's talk together. Bye-bye. Got a crazy story for you out of Kentucky. <laughs> Got a crazy for... <laughs> Thank you for watching Lato's Law. One good thing about music, when it hits you, you feel no pain.